Good evening everybody, it's Crafty Chris here and I am going to show you a quick little card that has a number of different variations you can use uh, with the basic idea and um, as was posted with the notification um, you needed to have some card blanks a little bit of white card stock and then a bunch of circles um, for you to be able to cut some circle shapes that were kind of ranging in size, a sentiment stamp, some black archival ink, and um, and some adhesive. So your favorite brand of adhesive. So I'm just using my bigger tape runner. Alrighty, so let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to do some sentiments on my um, piece of cardstock here. And I am going to take uh, the inside of the actual stamp package has a little bit of a, a foam piece protecting the stamps and it just gives a little bit of give when you're doing stamping so you can get a nice crisp image. Hopefully this pad is nice and inked. I haven't used it in a while. So I'm just, uh, oh and the thing about uh, prepping, this is a new stamp so what I did is I rubbed it on the inside of my arm. You can use a white eraser if you want just to take off that or, um, sort of like, uh, I guess it's a uh, kind of like a help alcohol um, layer that's on it to preserve it until somebody uses it. So I'm just going to stick my hello in the center there. I'm not going to rock, which I just actually did, so hopefully I didn't screw it up. Oh, there we go. Looks pretty good. And I'm going to do maybe four of these, um, or five of them maybe, I don't know. Just giving myself some distance. Oh, that didn't work too well. So this is not a good idea, but I'm going to try it anyway. Push in the center. Yeah, that one didn't work out. Not good. And so I'm going to get one that's, and I'm just going to push down in that center area. Ah, there we go because it didn't seem to like that center area. Put another one on there, push down. There we go. And one more. Alrighty, so I've got one, two, three, four usable ones. That's good enough. Okay, and then I'm just going to take my, before I put that away or take it off the mat or leave it to dry, I'm going to take my cleaner. My cleaner is not present. Uh, oh, yes, it is present. I thought I had brought it out. So I have a little bit of a cleaner that I use for this and it's just especially for things like uh, um, archival inks and uh, permanent inks just so you can condition and keep your stamps happy and I usually have a chamois flying around. So you can either wipe it off with a chamois or you can wipe it off using a bristle brush like this. So I just rub this right on top and it gets in all the nooks and crannies and then my stamp is nice and clean. Nothing comes off. Now you will know that there is, a, you'll notice that there is a, a darker haze to it after you've used it. Um, just make sure it doesn't look like ink is stuck on it, so you want to really give it a good scrub, but it will change the color slightly. So I'm going to put that aside and put that away later. Okay, so that's a little tip about stamps. And I'll put that away later. Okay, so I have these guys. I'm just going to trim them down with my little trimmer, if I can find my little trimmer. 
everything is all over the place i'm in the midst of about seven different projects right now okay so i'm gonna look at having maybe a quarter of an inch at the top and bottom of each of these that's uh, about a quarter of an inch this is the one that's not working have about a quarter of an inch there and I'm lining it up with the bottom of my words because I didn't really pay any attention when I was stamping them to whether I had them lined up um, uh, equally so you'll notice that this is higher on that side lower on that side so now I just adjust to make sure that everything is lined up there we go all right and now that one edge is lined up i can give myself half an, a quarter of an inch all the way around and that seems to be off and a quarter inch on the side here i'm just estimating with my eyeballs and that's my finished tag to go on the uh, on the card this one's a little off so i'm going to just straighten that up a tiny bit oh, that looks better and then take my quarter inch there and just make sure this is lined up better on this side there we go and take my quarter inch there so just quickly making up a couple of tags a quarter of an inch all the way around so that they look oops when they're small like this it's hard to get them in okay that one might be a little narrower there we go nobody sees all the cards together so it doesn't matter if one's perfect and the rest are not you don't have to compare one to the other that looks pretty good there we go and there we are so there's my four things that i'm going to put on the outsides of my cards now i'm going to prep my cards so my cards come um i could get them in a package they come uh straight like this so i just want to make sure that i fold them evenly um, and line them up when i'm folding them so that i don't have any of the back side showing through the front side and so on because even though they have that line depending on how you work with it it could be crooked or straight so line this up again so there's one two nice fold three and this is really the part that you know you can be fussy like me or not care it doesn't really matter uh, i don't think anybody pays attention but in my brain um, if it's off it throws me off in my designing and laying out of things so that's why i tend to pay attention right at the beginning okay those are done Alrighty, so now i'm going to start preparing my circles now I've got three demonstrations to show you, but I'll, I'll do each of them one uh, demonstration at a time. Um, just making sure. Okay, so this circle is a four, I think it's a four inch circle. Uh, it's a little over, it's four and an eighth inch circle. It's too big for a card. So you'd want to have a four inch circle. And I think I have a four inch circle. I don't have a punch or um, some of you may have dies that you can cut these with your dies. 
Um, but I have my little random smattering of, oh, this is four and an eighth as well. Okay, good enough. So I'm going to do something different. I am going to use my big one and I'm going to make it smaller. So I'm going to organize my, I've just got primary colors for today and I'm going to organize them in the way they are when you create a prism. So from orange, from red and yellow, you get orange. So that is how you would see it on the color wheel. From yellow and blue, you would get green. And then if I was continuing on from blue and red, you get purple. So this is kind of how my rainbow is going to go. Okay, and I'm going to start my biggest circle with the red. And I am going to just simply draw my, I'm going to trace my eighth inch circle and I'm going to put it right to the line because I'm actually going to make it a four inch circle. And I'll show you how I do that. Uh, it's really quite sketchy. <laughs> I don't worry about how the back sides look on things. It's more with how they look on the front. So then what I do is I take my ruler and I just mark off, just, you know, so that I know what I'm doing, um, a sixteenth of an inch in on both sides. And that will give me a four inch circle. So I just randomly go about my circle, um, moving my ruler in a sixteenth of an inch from, it's actually four and a quarter. Whoops, you can't see me very well. It's actually four and an eighth. So I'm just going to move that up and that brings it in a sixteenth of an inch on that side. And just put a line there and a line there. And maybe do another one here. Trying to sort of make sure it's a little bit in the center of the circle. Okay, and then I'm literally just going to sketch. And the line is not going to be super perfect. I just have to remember when I cut it, then I'm going to cut along the outside edge of that line. So if it's fat and it moves into the center of the circle, I don't care as long as that outside edge is as accurate and a sixteenth of an inch as I can get. And if I've gone over, there we go. And you know, you may or may not feel too comfortable doing this. That's okay. Um, you, as you practice, it becomes easier. And you see I'm actually hitting most of my marks. That's a little wide actually. I'm hitting most of my marks on that outside edge of the circle. And that's how I do my four. Okay, so I am going to show you four different ways to use this. So I am going to pull out um, one, two, three, four. I'm going to pull out um, two large red circles. So now that I have this template, I can copy this template and I can make any size circle I want from this. Um, one, two, one, two. Ah, let's make one more just in case. Okay. I always go and get more scrap paper. Now I'm using plain colors. You can do this with um, pattern paper. You can do this monochromatic, so um, meaning that all the colors are in the same color side of the um, color wheel. So you can do in greens, yellows, and blues as a an analogous grouping of colors, that means they're side to side on the color wheel, or you can do it um, dark gray, light gray, or dark gray, medium gray, light gray, which is again 
Um, that's a monochromatic sort of way to do it, where it's all the same color but just different intensities. You can do it pure color in the middle and then color with black added and color with white added on either side. So there's a bunch of different uh, different choices you have in creating the, the look. All right, so these are my biggest circles and I have a two inch circle cutter, which I'm going to do some cutting. Uh, this is one, two, three. Um, I am going to do some cutting of the next color, which is orange and the two inch. One, two, three. And then I'm going to do some uh, one and a half inch in the yellow. One. Two. Three in the yellow and then I'm going to go down one and go to the one and a quarter inch in the green and your type of paper makes a difference as to how easy it is to do this cutting two and whoop, three so I because um, punches sometimes give you problems, and now I'm going down to uh, one inch. I'm going to do three one inch. Because punches tend to do make a lot of pressure on your hands, especially if you're like me and you have a little bit of arthritis in your hands, you want to make sure that you don't go crazy doing um, hours of circle punching. But I do suggest that you get circles punched in all of your scrap paper so that you don't have to spend time doing this part when you're um, wanting to create something that's already ready to go. Ooh. Oh, it's always the last one that hurts me in this punch because I can't really grip it as well. There's three and then the last color is going to be the purple, which I'm doing in three quarters of an inch. So you can get the idea that it's uh, getting smaller as we go. And I always do punching along the longest length of the paper so that I have 12 inches left over um, in case I want to use the rest of the paper in borders or mats or whatever. Oh, yeah. again, that last punch is the hardest. Okay, and here we go. There we go. Okay. Alrighty, so that's the prep for some of that. So, there's um, what we want to do, there's three different ways I want to show you. We're going to put these together in three different ways. Um, one way is centering everything. So you would have the orange, the yellow, the green, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and then the red. The red is really big. I don't like it being that big. Hmm. Okay, we're going to have to cut that down. And they're really happy with it being that much bigger. So I'm going to use my smaller um, punch here, and or my smaller whole, uh, circle, and I'm just going to draw the biggest of the small circles, if that makes any sense. And I'm going to measure out from that, or in, oh, <laughs> wait a second. Try it on this side. Okay, so I want to get, let's see, uh, maybe a half inch outside 
of this circle. So I need to make sure that I do not start my circle. It has to be a half inch from the edge is where my circle is when I, when I draw it because that half inch is what I'm going for. So I'm measuring out from my circle, half inch here, Alrighty, half inch here, trying to go approximately through the center of the circle, half inch here, half inch here, and again half inch here, half inch here, uh, one more, just makes it a little easier half inch here and then half inch there. Okay, so now I'm going to draw, sketch my half inch from one dot to the next dot. It's not going to be perfect and it's going to be really close. And like I've always said, whenever you're doing lines or um, drawing to match a shape, you want to not be looking at the pencil, but you want to kind of have your gaze um, between this line and that line as you're moving your pencil. Because if you look right at the tip, you're bound to um, go off. Like right there, I did that. <laughs> so we're just looking at the edge of the circle on the inside to help us get that rounded two inch. So there you go. That's not great, but it's not too bad. Just going to open that up a bit. And that looks pretty good, if you can see that. And I'm just going to cut around the outside edge. This. I need to make a little more clear. So I'm going to start there. And that's where my edge. And I'm going to go around the outside edge of this. Oops. And there we go. And then I look at the back side, and if I've got any pointy sections, I just kind of trim them down a tiny little bit. So they don't look so sharp and pointy, because sometimes when you're cutting um, inside a circle, it uh, creates little pointy bits. So that's more or less good enough. Now I'm going to do that on my other two, as we know that uh, we're not going to like the end result. So I'm going to just trace this circle onto my other two circles. And I might even just keep the two circles together with some repositionable tape while I cut them. So grab some repositionable tape which is somewhere in my pile of stuff. There we go. Just a little tiny bit. Make sure I have my, can't really tell my underside on that one. There we go. So just tape it right there. And now I'm going to cut. There we go. Cutting right along that line. Now normally I would move the paper instead of my scissors, but um, I'm trying to keep the two layers together so I get more or less an exact cut. And I have a little wonky thing happening here, so I'm just going to trim that. There we go. And as I said, these are not going to be on the same 
work so you don't have to worry about it. There we go. And this one has a little wonky bit here too. There we go. All right. So I wasted a bit of paper there, but it's no big deal. Alrighty. So now these kind of go a little bit closer together. So we're going to have one in the center and we're going to have one that goes to the side. And I'm not sure about that one yet. So what we have to do now is actually glue down our uh, cardstock and center it as best as we can in the center of our circle on this one. So we're going to I don't happen to like the pattern on the outside of some of the paper, so I'm showing the side that isn't patterned. Now, these ones have dis differences in different spacings. Um, if you like it more uniform, you can certainly um, use dies that are nesting dies. I personally don't care too much. So there's one. Ooh, that one the, my trimmer needs a little bit of sharpening. So if you're getting fuzzy edges, sharpen your your cutters or your. There we go. So there's one. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our chopper. This would not work if all you have to cut is. Um, uh, one of those uh, wire cutters that has a, a blade on a wire. Um, this is going to be too heavy for it. You want a guillotine and if you don't have a guillotine you're just going to measure across, line it up halfway, mark your dots across it or if you want to do it from the back make it cut it halfway and use scissors because um, otherwise you're going to really wreck up your um, okay, where am I at here? I'm at three inches, so it's going to be one and a half inches is my halfway point. And it's going to take some pushing. Ah, even with my, my cutter, it's uh, not perfect. So you'll see that it, I, I didn't cut firmly enough. So now I'm, I've got a bit of a mess on the edges. Hopefully that will disappear when we put them together. So there's those two pieces. One of the examples is going to have these guys in the center and we are going to shift them. So the idea is to um, put this at some point and glued them down slightly shifted. I kind of like matching the green because it's the third color in and we're going to stick that down with our adhesive. So first of all let's measure. We want to be halfway in the card. Helps if I have it. Actually I'll use my my board. I'm much better with my board. My mat here. So I am going to measure, that's the halfway point on that side, and then we're going to do a halfway point on this side as well. Oops, without wiggling, if possible. There we go. All right, so this I'm going to do a very, very light line in the center section, not at the edges because this is where everything is going to line up in here. Okay, so my first section, now you can start with this up and, and go to the right or you can, whatever direction you want to go is up to you. So you can do this side to the right or you can do this side to the left, whatever you would like to do. So I'm going to do, I actually kind of liked it to the right, so I'm going to think I'm going to do that. 
So if these two pieces are stuck together, actually I'm going to open it up a little bit because I'm just realizing if I put this in the center, we're going to miss most of our color. So I can put it to the side, top or bottom. So maybe I will just give myself the oranges to work with. So I'm going to do my oranges. Hmm, don't really like that though. I like that. That looks more fun. Okay, we'll figure it out. Okay, so um, if I'm using if I'm using the greens and the yellows as my matching points, then I have to sort of eyeball distance from the side. And I'm just going to put a small tick mark. It's about yeah, it's about a half inch from the side. I'm going to put a tick mark right there. And that's where I'm going to glue my first piece. And you want to put a fair bit of glue on it just so that it stays nice and tight. So that's, I want to line it up with my pencil line. You can see my pencil line. So I'm going to line it up from that point along my pencil line. There we go. Okay. That means this should end up being a half inch from the other side if I worked my magic. So now I'm just going to line up the two colors that I wanted to be, which were green and yellow. Okay. And there is my basic card. And you'll notice my cut is not straight. But that's okay because guess what gets pop dotted. I'm going to trim this down a little bit so it doesn't go over the edge of the card now that I know I need to cover up something a little bit. So I'm going to give it like a sixteenth of an inch all the way around. Really tighten that up. Sixteenth of an inch all the way around. There we go. Oops, come on. There we go. Alrighty, so now mm, it's not quite a sixteenth of an inch there. There we go. A little too much on the O side. There, just giving it some a little bit of breathing room, but not too much. All right. Now this I'm going to pop dot. Get my pop dots out. They are around here somewhere. As I said, my projects are pretty. mark on the pop dots. Oh well. Okay, so, uh, oh, I have some leftover of this, so that will work. So I'm just going to tear some of this pop dot lines that I have lying here. Don't know where my other pop dots are. Buried under my desk. Okay, and I'm just going to trim a couple of these. more and a piece in the middle. Okay, there we go. I wouldn't use these because they're very narrow normally. Take this off. All the pop 
pop that in parts off. There we go. And stick it from your fingers. And I'm just going to place it right there where it says hello. And there's your first simple card with your um, rainbow at the top and the bottom. Okay, so that's one card. Now, I'm going to cut all of our, our circles in half. Um, so we're going to find our halfway point in all of the circles. And so, except for the... Nope, we're going to find it in all of the circles. So, we're going to just put little tick lines. Whoopsie. Here and here. And then here and here. Actually, we don't even need that second one. So we're going to line up each of these in our cutter and cut them in half. So I don't even put it up to the top because I find I can't see it when I put it way up here. So I'm just going to put it, there's one. So that's what we're going to do. Now let's just make sure we have our halfway measurements. So one. Just kind of line it up. Three. Doesn't matter which side, but I'll do the back. and the last one. Just a little mark so you can see where to cut. So now we can finish cutting all of these. Oh, the lighting is a little rough. Put on this side. Hopefully I can see a little better. Yes, much better. There we go. There's two halves. Our purple. It's very tiny. Two halves. Hello. Green. Turn that over because I don't like that lumpy side. And orange. There we go. All right. So now we are going to glue these in two different ways. So on this one, we are going to start gluing to the right hand side. On this one, we are going to start gluing to the left hand side. All right. So that's basically the idea. Now you can see that they don't end up matching up together. That's why we have to glue them separately. So this is basically how it should look. Make sure you turn your pencil mark sides down. So 
you're going to have something that looks a little like this. Oops. Alrighty. And so you have to glue them separately because they do not form a circle like we did on the other projects. So we are going to just glue it all onto the page. So our first thing to think about is we're going to have it end up a circle on the page. So we can start maybe a sixteenth in because I really kind of want to show some red around it and give it a bit of um, a bit of a, a window like a frame. So let's get our center mark. Do I want to do that one? Okay. And so we're finding our center mark again. And we can just don't even have to turn it around, just mark it on both sides. Do a little line in the center, so you have your center point. Okay, make sure it's light. You don't want it to show on your finished project. And we are going to have this end up being a circle. A little bit of a space in between. And what is going to happen is our hello is going to go down the middle. Okay, so I want to leave some space, maybe a half, a, a, mm, uh, maybe three eighths. So let's mark that actually while we're here. So three eighths on either side, or th mm -hmm, three eighths. Just want to make sure that's going to get covered up. Yeah. Okay. One, two, three eighths. One, two, three eighths. One, two, three eighths. And three eighths. Okay. So that's where I'm going to make sure my images go. And we're going to have them centered. So if this is three inches and this is five and a half inches, we're going to have two and a half inches left over, which is one and a quarter inches from the sides. So we're going to put one and a quarter inches from the side so we know where to start. Alrighty, all set up. Now, let's get some gluing done. So uh, we're going to take our first piece and we are going to make sure it lines up with the point that is the end and the three eighths of an inch up that we created the two points. So we're lining it right up on there. And that should make it look like it's centered. And now we're going to do the same for the bottom. Oh, I didn't give my one and a quarter inches line here. Oh, you know what I can do? Uh, no, that's not easy. So we're going to do one and a quarter inches 
again to where that's where we begin and the 3 8 inch mark is there so let me just show you that so this little first mark is one and a quarter inches in and this line here is 3 8 of an inch down and we're going to line that up making sure we start at the right place and cover those marks and we just give it an eyeball and it looks pretty central that's awesome so now it's just a matter of gluing these guys down and we're just going to move in a slight little bit each time so I'm I'm saying like 30 second of an inch so you can see just just a tiny little bit in each time the orange and the red are hard to see but you'll be able to see it better with the yellow so let me show it with the yellow it's just giving it a tiny bit of air okay so can you see how it's just going in a tiny little bit to the orange a tiny little bit to the yellow and then our green is going to be in a tiny little bit so see that little tiny bit of yellow and, and green there got to get focused okay all right and then the blue again just that tiny little bit making sure all of your pieces touch on the bottom if possible and then the purple There we go. Alrighty. So there's our first side done. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Just that tiny little bit in. It's easier if I do it this way. Tiny little bit in. Tiny little bit in. Oops. Too much adhesive on that one. Got a little hairy bit on there. There we go. Tiny little bit there. Tiny little bit in, and then finally the purple, which is very small. <laughs> and that tiny little bit in again. All right, so there we have it. Now we're going to get another one of our tags. This time I want to corner around the tag. Um, I'm going to give it a small round. So on my rounder, I can use this one just to give it a little bit of difference. I could also watercolor the background, do a splash on it. Um, but I kind of like just the plain and simple white. Alrighty. One more time. Alrighty. And we're just going to put our pop dots. One, two, three, four, and five. Take our covers off. Make 
sure they're all done and I'm going to just line it up in the center making sure I'm centering it and there you are there's another card all right so for our last card we are going to do something a little bit different um, we are going to do all the same size circles and um, then I'll show you a, a fifth card that I created um, after the class. Alrighty, so we're going to do all the same size circles but in um, these papers. So let's pull everything back. Now, let me see my paper. I just want to see if I how big I want to start and if this would be enough. Okay, you know what? I'm going to use my two and then we're going to work down from there. So I need a two inch circle in red. That's what was missing in those cards. That's why they have so much red here. I didn't should have done a slightly smaller version two and then I'm moving down to one and a half orange Ugh. oh there we go two one and a half and then we're doing one and a quarter of the yellow Remember, going up the long side so you have this to use for another project. There we go. And then I'm going to use uh, yellow or green. And green is going to be in one inch. <laughs> sound like I'm lifting weights or something and then wait a minute what I do two oh I only have five sizes that's why okay oh I just said I was doing those all in the same size okay so put those away for later Let's go back. Sorry for the mistake. So we're doing everything two inch size. So we've got two inch size red. We need two inch size orange. There we go. What happened? Didn't push all the way down. There we go. 2 inch orange, 2 inch yellow, along the long side, maybe up in the corner, 2 inch green, we really are getting the raw me today, 2 inch blue, And two inch purple. And that should be six. Oh, that's a really nasty cut. That paper's slightly thinner than the others, and I think that makes a difference with my punches. They don't like the thin paper, they want to grab it and keep it. So I should have six. Yes, I do. Beautiful. All right. Now, here's where the other colors of paper come in. I've asked you to um, pull out a few other colors of paper in the, the description. So we are going to now do the two inch punches on that other group of paper.
Okay, so as I was saying, uh, you need to get the additional three colors that I actually have, which is like a, a different color of orange. So this is more yellowy orange and a different color of blue, a light blue and a pink. So we're going to get a two inch slice out of each of those. I always look at the bottom part of my punch so I can conserve what I take. One. This has a pattern on it again. Or a texture, I shouldn't say pattern, it's a texture. And then this. Alrighty. Okay, so how this is going to lay out, this is a pink. So pink comes before red, and then red, then orange, then yellow, then this kind of different kind of yellow, and then green, and then light blue, and then blue, and then purple. So those are our colors. There should be nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So those are all our colors. Now, <clears throat> we are for the most part going to put down one, two, three, four of them as is. So four of them, one, two, three, four, are going to be laid down as is. We're going to put them on the card as you see them. Then these guys are going to be cut to fit into and create a circle, which I'll explain to you when we get to that point. So let's lay these guys down. Um, we'll need another card base. I should have had you, I thought I had you fold four. Yes, you did. And I have it here. Okay. So I want to give myself a half inch on both sides. And we're going to have to play around a little bit with this. Uh, so first, let's do the center of the page. Always got to center our page. Okay, pencil, center. We haven't done any erasing yet, so we will remember to do that before the end of the demo. Or scrap along, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, so we're going to have it along here. We are going to measure in a half inch here so that we know we're going to start there and a half an inch there is where we have to end. Okay. So we are going to make sure that all of our pieces are moving along this line. This outer piece is going to end up there. So everything else we have has to fit into um, actually, we can spread it out just a little bit. So this piece ends there. That starts there. And that ends there. A little bit of mathy, mathy stuff involved. So this one we're going to have to prep first, and then we can figure out how to spread it across. Okay, so all of these guys are going to have to fit inside this larger circle. So the easiest way to do it is to just glue them down, one on top of the other. So I'm going to put some strips of glue. And we are going to... We might have to move them around a little. It's pretty much eyeballing. Yeah. And I need to go a little bit more like that. Then that will come there. Then that will come there. Then that will come there. And by all intents and purposes, we'll still see all the colors. 
and that should work. Okay, so we're giving like a quarter of an inch in between each. All right. So now we're going to the light blue face down. Give it that quarter of an inch. Trying to keep everything lined up. So I should point out that I am keeping all my circles lined up because I'm keeping them within that two inch range here. Okay, so the blue is two inch, purple is two inch, and now the light blue is going to be two inch with a quarter inch down. Okay, then we have the green. And we're going to keep that all lined up again. And this is going to have a quarter of an inch, more or less. Okay. And then our final color is the orange. Making sure that we keep that two inches going with that quarter inch separation. All right, now we have to cut around the purple circle from the back in order to make sure everything fits in on the front. So you're gonna take your time and you're just gonna follow the line of the circle. Now, if it gets too thick, just cut it off and then you can go back in. Because you just want those colors to end up being the only thing you see. But the, on this side, you're just seeing the purple. So some you may have to switch to a smaller scissor to get down to that nitty-gritty bit. Of course, this becomes much easier if you do it again with um, nesting dies. This is the way you can do it without nesting dies. And you just want to make sure everything looks tidy and clean on the front. All right, so there we go. So this now determines how far we put each of these together. So these are going to go together the same way these went together, but we are not trimming these. We're keeping these untrimmed. There we go. So they are going to be all adhered to one to the other in the same manner, keeping them a quarter of an inch apart and within the two inches. There we go. sure we keep that lined up. There we go. In the beginning it doesn't matter so much but it really matters in the end because the further you go down if they're off at the beginning then they're going to be really off at the end. So you want to make sure they're all on. Now I just want to make sure that looks about right. That yellow looks a bit big. Okay, put these guys back in line. And now is that too small? Nope, that looks okay. So now these are going to go on top of there. And actually, um, that's become quite thick. So I think what I'm going to do is trace that and cut it so that this will fit into that. So doing that it means lining everything up again. 
within the two inches. And this on, giving it its half inch or a quarter inch and making sure it's lined up. And then I'm going to draw a light line. Okay, so now I can see where I need to cut, and I'm going to cut on the inside of that line. And actually, I'm going to get rid of most of this. Yeah, I'll do it later. So I'm going to cut inside of that line all the way around. Okay, this fell off because I didn't have any adhesive up at the top. And this is the one I want, so I'm just going to have to put that orange back on there. And I'm going to use a little glue because I don't think the adhesive is going to hold it so great. Alrighty. So we're going to tuck that in there. Alrighty, there we go. There we are. And now these two pieces will fit together. Cool, right? I think that looks pretty awesome. Alrighty, now to fit these two on here, we have to make sure that they're even on both sides. And of course, they're centered. So again, using our I'm lining up the edge of this blue with that blue on one of my lines so I know I've got it centered whoops and then it's within the two inches and then this is going to be my center point and this is my center point back here. Okay, so I want to make sure that I'm lining that up on the line and then I'll erase those lines. And then I'm doing the same to this. So we're making sure that the pink on both sides lines up. And everything is in. Oh, this looks like it's a little out. I should have shifted that a bit more. Anyway, this is the line to join. This is the back. My goodness. We almost made it the whole time without that. Okay, so there's how we're going to put it down. And this is... three and a quarter inches. So if I have three and a quarter inches, then that leaves me with one, two and a quarter. So that would be one and an eighth would be my starting point. So let's work with one and an eighth. One and an eighth. So there's my starting point. And there is my ending point. Okay. So I'm going to get some adhesive. Make sure I've got it all under everything. These little pieces, I definitely want a little bit of glue on those edges because they're uh, very tiny. Hang on a second. Glue doesn't want to come out. This is my never ending glue. I've had this for years and it just never seems to go empty. Alright, so this guy is coming from this side, starting there. There we go. I just put a fingers on those tips for a minute. Okay, 
And then this one is a circle, so I can just put adhesive in it. And I'm lining this up. This needs to stay down with that and that. Let me do it this way so I can see it better. I want it to fit right in and line right up. And there we go. Got a couple of lines I need to erase. So where's my tool? Oh, my battery's dying. So let me find my other eraser, which works just as well. So we're going to take these lines off. There we go. Take those lines in the center off. I am going to um, take, I see a little bit of glue on the red. So I'm just going to try and rub that glue off a bit. Got to be careful if it's a paper that has the ink on top of it, you can take the color off. So we're just careful not to do that. All right, so there's our card. And now this is kind of big for these size of circles. So I would just put it be even this way. I like it. I like it like that. Down in that corner. Make sure I have the right corner. <laughs> you want to make sure the card opens on the right side. And again, get those pop dots happening. Now, to jazz this up a little bit, you can add gems. Um, uh, glitter, all kinds of different um, other elements to make them fancy, but this is your basic card. All ready to go. There we are. Da, 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 da. So we have hello, 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 and Hello. Hello. Okay, for this last card, we are going to, um, first of all, get our card base. Hmm. Oh, there they are. <coughs> Excuse me. Get a card base, fold our card. All right, and what I had to do on this one was I had to do two sets of circles. So I have one set of circles, which is my going to be my bottom circles, and they go blue, uh, purple, light blue, dark blue, white, and dark purple again. And then my top circles go blue, white, dark blue, light blue, and then light blue again. Okay. Oh, actually, I don't think I need that one. I think I just need that one. Okay, so I am going to cut all of these in half except for this one. So this dark purple on the bottom are not going to be cut in half. So let me just mark my halfway points. Make sure I have equidistance on either side. Halfway points. The nice thing about circles is centering them is fairly easy because they're circles. Still having trouble with that punch. And so let's OK. 
Okay. Half, half, half. This one needs to be in half. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. And then I have to do the same for these three. Oh, that's a very nasty cut line, but I think I'm just going to cut that off. So I will center this. Put my halfway points. Halfway points. And this is kind of, oh, I think I'll do it this way. Hmm. There we go. Halfway points. All right. Uh, I'm not using that one, and this one I don't do anything to. Okay. So now let's get our little cutter out. I'm going to do our, oh, keep our things separate. So this is one side, this is the other side. That's how we cut them, it's very different. So there's one. And we're making, we can make two cards out of the materials that we're using for this one card. Because we have the, the other halves. That's going to stay. all of these in half. And I'm having trouble seeing the half mark on the purple. So I just changed my lighting. I don't like that one. Keep that one. And there we go. So that's that half. Now we just got to do these guys. Okay, that is going to be not used. And that I'm not cutting, but this I am. So you can't really use the other half of the other stuff on the other side because they are totally different sizes. So the two blues are uh, the same but like the whites are totally different size so you can't really play with the numbers that way Alrighty. okay so now the idea oh, we're going to set this up again because we're going to go this time we're going to go long wise and i'm going to need my halfway point so uh, Gonna mark my halfway point at the top and bottom. Okay. And draw my little line more or less in the center. Okay. Now uh, what is gonna happen is this is gonna be off to one side. And this is going to be off to the other side but we need to make sure that the patterns match in between so we're going to set up the patterns first we're going to glue them together so on the dark we're going to put the light blue this is the bottom side light blue is going to go in here and again we're going to have that little smidge of a space so it gives it some air so when I say that, you can see the purple on the edge there. It's like a 32nd of an inch. And I can see my mark. So I want to erase that. Well, it'll cover up, but anyway. Then we're going to put the blue, the medium blue. Can't figure out what side it has. And we're going to give it that little bit of space. 
Make sure we're lining it up right along the edge. So we don't want any of the light blue to show underneath. There we go. Hang on a second, I'm going to reposition that. There we go, that's better. And the white thing goes on. There's a tiny little bit showing and none of the blue showing. Okay, alrighty, and then this guy is gonna go on top, but we're gonna put him on top afterwards. So let's do the top one. We're starting with the top. The next color down is gonna be the white. And we are gonna put that a smidge from the edge, like we did the other one. We're going to do the blue, a smidge from the edge, okay, and we're going to put that on top afterwards. So basically what we're trying to do is line up our colors how they will flow, okay. All right, sorry, had a moment that I had to think about this. Okay, so this all together, when I'm lining up these colors, comes to two and a half, more or less. Almost a half. All right, so that's one and a quarter from each side, more or less. One and a quarter, start mark, and then one and a quarter, end mark. Does that make sense? That does not make sense. No, totally off. Oh, I know why, because that's the distance. Um, okay. Sorry, I, lose, I must be getting tired. So let's measure that again. So that's two and a half, and we have four. Uh, so two and a half to four is one and a half. This is four or four and a quarter. It's four and a quarter. So it's one and three quarters. So half of one and three quarters is five eighths. So two, four, five eighths, and two, four, five eighths. God, I hope that's right. Let's try it. So this is supposed to be on this line there, and this is supposed to be not there. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty, I have to break the distance in half, in a third. Okay. And actually, I don't like this in the middle. So I'm going to take that away all together and I'm going to put it up a little bit higher. I want it to be three inches from the bottom. Three inches from the bottom. I don't have to mark those corners. I could just use my ruler on the mat and then 
this is going to be this kind of looks to me like we're going to be doing three quarters of an inch seven eighths of an inch so let's mark that and see how we do. Mark that from this side and then we'll just go from there. So there's seven eighths of an inch as a starting point. And then we are going to see if that looks balanced. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, so now we're gonna glue that bottom piece down. The bottom piece is the one that has four colors in it. We're going to start at that point and make sure it goes along the center line. Okay. Then we're going to take the top piece, which is the piece that has only three colors. We're going to line up the white and the blue. That line between the white and the blue. Make sure that it lines up. Okay. Then we are going to tape our circle here so that it, oh, we should mark our center, sorry, should have done that. So we're going to mark our center. Uh, make sure that it's about halfway. We're going to mark our centers, one there, one there, okay, so we make sure that we line it up along this line, and you're going to put that light blue one on the top, but it won't go over the edge, okay, I might have to stick some more adhesive under there, I think I will doesn't have enough adhesive on that side. There we go. Try that again. So right at the edge, lined up along the center. So if you can see my marks, my center marks are at either side and it's lined up right along that edge. Okay, and I can gently erase my mark and this mark while I'm here. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Ah, again, I forgot to put my center marks. There we go. And that's going to line up here. I can see my mark. There we are. And there. Perfect. And there's our new fifth version. Um, I would probably go a little bigger than I've gone today. Just I don't happen to have, um, uh, what do you call it, um, nesting circles. So I had to work with what I had. But there you go. It's awesome. Beautiful. And, whoops, <laughs> okay, so this was great except I put it on the wrong side. So this blue should have gone on the, sh the three color side and this purple should have gone on the... Or color side. There we go. That's the way it should look because this is how we were opening it. And take away. There we go. Awesome. And I don't have a great stamp for this. I don't want anything too, too big. Uh, let's see what I've got. Just handy here. 
all the sticky stuff. Alrighty, so out of that stamp pack. I have remember this moment, love this, my aim is true, love notes. Mm, yeah. Be amazing. I like that one. So we're gonna do a be amazing. Quickly take this off. that on there. Make sure you put your stuff all back where they belong because they can get stuck on the back of things very easily. I'm going to keep that out. I'm going to use the back side of this because it's still good. And there we go. Actually, I'm just going to drop it on the paper. There we go, and then that way I can line it up on the stamp. Beautiful! And conditioning it on the inside of my arm so it takes off that stuff that's in there. Okay. And I am opening my black ink. And... Making sure I get it nice and there we go. I think my husband's going for a dog walk. <laughs> there we go. Push in the center because it's a long one. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay, so closing this up. I'll clean my stamp in a minute. Want to finish with you all first. Trimming this out, not too much. I like the uh, the large frame around it, so I think I'll just trim it. And you could ink the edges of this. There's so many things that you could do. Um, let's see, be amazing. I like that. We have so many stamps and things that this is why I need to do this stash bus busting stuff because I need to use these things as I'm sure to you. And so we're just going to put Be Amazing there. I think I'm going to round the corners. This time I'm going to be taking a big chunk out of it. because I have choices. There we go. Gives it a little bit more. And I could put a line around it if I wanted to. And there you go. Pop dots. And make sure I eyeball this properly. And there we have. So all in all, we have our hellos and we have our variety of cards in this line of technique. So that's it for tonight. Have a great night and we will see you next Thursday for something a little different. Bye now.